Research is the heart and soul of science. Without constant experimentation to prove or disprove one's hypotheses, the scientist is left trying to solve the world's problems by guesswork. That is hardly the most efficient way to achieve results. I try to maintain a modest selection of useful experimental equipment in my simple laboratory. Unfortunately, it has become very difficult to obtain the most modern scientific accessories since the road out of the valley became closed by the swamp. Mad? Mad? They all call me mad, but what do they know of madness? I am not mad. A bit perturbed about the world situation and how I get so little respect, perhaps, but certainly not mad. You say goodbye to Dr. Cranium. Please be careful not to break the beakers or crack the flasks on your way out. Come back and visit again! Oh, and if you see Igor, please tell him I still need the fluid. The headstone carver stares at you and then goes back to work. This is a bas relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. You have a creepy feeling as if it is looking right back at you. Bad place. <laughs> very bad place. Go away. You'll be very sorry. <sighs> Nobody ever listened to Igor. Bad place. <laughs> very bad place. Go away. You'll be very sorry. You push the dark one sign into the indentation on the door. It fits perfectly. A long wooden table attests to a time when this room was used to double as a communal dining room for the monks. It's a six-tentacled, octopus-like creature. I guess you'd call it a hexapod. Unless you like cats, then you might call it a hexapus. This amazingly lifelike sculpture looks like a cross between a baby troll and a hermit or dervish. It fits the description of a domovoi, except that it's totally dried out and unmoving.
You can't budget. If you want to do anything with the sculpture, you'll have to do it here. This is a fairly attractive, in a Baroque way, display cabinet with a glass door. This is a no longer used monastery. The furnishings are in poor condition and the carpet and drapes are faded and threadbare. The symbols of the Dark One make this an uncomfortable place to be. There are some small scratches on the stone underneath this brass log holder. Hector the Hexapod happily gorges itself on the garlic. Hector looks much less hungry and perhaps a little less dangerous now. There is a cold feeling down here that chills your bones and sets the hairs on the nape of your neck on end. There is a musty odor of mold and mildew mingling with the sickeningly sweet smell of decaying flesh. Welcome to your nightmare. This is a dangerous place. You probably knew that. Handle with care. An incredible sensation of evil emanates from over by the book. That seems like an excellent thing to avoid. Above the altar is the sign of the Dark One, surrounded by arcane letters. A notch next to the A makes you think that perhaps that is some sort of starting point for the letters. You've seen some pretty ridiculous things in your time, and that's certainly one of them. These bizarre creatures are only stone carvings, you hope. The huge barrel is labeled Cask of Amontillado. This must be the fabled spirit that provided most of the income and fame of the monastic order here. It is rumored to provide strange and mystical visions to those who taste freely of its contents. It's a small barrel, perhaps once used for brandy. There is a huge book on the altar. The binding looks like stretched human skin with letters and markings written in dried blood. The letters spell out Necrophilicon. What could that mean? Oh, that's it. Something like the Silmarian for Of the Love of Death. Ugh. There's something very, very wrong and dangerous about this book. The roll-top desk is spotted with dark and ominous stains. The crack in the building looks like a serpent. It seems you aren't the only thing under stress down here. Thank you.